So this is a uh, this is a molecule of morphine. And I'll just take you around the molecule. So we have uh, oxygen in red, and the blue one is nitrogen. That's really important. And the black ones, uh, they're carbon. So the whole combination of those makes up this quite interesting looking scaffold. You can see if you look down there, it's kind of T-shaped. We've got a fairly flat top and a fairly tall upright bit here, and that's really important for the way it interacts. Morphine obviously is a painkiller, uh, a so-called analgesic. So morphine and all the op so-called opiate analgesics come from poppy seeds. And these poppy seeds produce the most of these compounds when they come from Afghanistan or Pakistan. For some reason, the, the, the growth uh, of the poppies there produces much, much more of these compounds. Now, there's a problem with that, possibly, because obviously over the years, those countries have had all sorts of political instability. Uh, there can be issues with uh, getting the, the compound out of there. And so synthetic chemists have tried to develop syntheses of morphine, which wouldn't rely on those countries to source the, the raw feedstock, if you will. And it's a very complicated molecule, as you can see. We can make it, but it can't be made cheaply enough for it to be commercially viable. So another problem with uh, morphine, apart from how to, to source uh, the raw material, is uh, the, the horrific side effects it's got. Uh, so it can give you nausea, uh, depression, it gives respiratory depression, slows your breathing down. You get tolerance to it, so it, the more you have it, the more you need for it to give the same effect. And you get terrible withdrawal symptoms as well. But the key thing it does have is it is a brilliant uh, analgesic or painkiller for real deep pain, like the, your broken leg. There is nothing else which can ever approach it uh, for that. And believe me, medicinal chemists have tried all sorts of things. They've tried making it much more complicated, and that led to a couple of interesting uh, compounds which actually fitted in the same keyhole, but didn't produce any painkilling effect at all. So in the Second World War, obviously supply of, uh, of morphine and other painkillers was a real problem. And actually the Germans came up with a much simpler compound. So if we look at this compound here, this is uh, called meperidine or pethidine, as, as you'll know it um, in the hospitals. If we overlay those, you can see that it, it fits pretty well. So it interacts, this is in the same sort of place here, the nitrogen's in the same sort of place. It interacts with the same receptor. And it's about a fifth as active as morphine. It's also much quicker to get in to the receptor, do its business and get out. So these days this is used in childbirth to help relieve the pain and uh, relax the, uh, the mother-to-be. Now there are various other opiates that you may have heard of and it's amazing what one atom uh, can do really, or what one, uh, one functional group as we call it as chemists can do. So this is morphine, so if we pop this one on here, that now is codeine. Now codeine is around a hundred times less active than morphine, in fact it's, it's r so relatively safe and inactive, you can go and buy it in a chemist as cocodamol or other brand names. So it's amazing what that one little thing has done. It's completely uh, tamed the beast in many ways. And codeine has far less of these uh, terrible withdrawal effects as well. So if we take that off and we put on a couple of these groups, so you can see that there's some more oxygens uh, coming in here. These are called acetate groups. That now is called heroin, which uh, I'm sure you'll have heard of. And heroin actually is more active than uh, the morphine, very slightly more active. And it's also got even worse withdrawal symptoms. If you've seen train spotting, you'll have, uh, you'll have noticed they're not very pleasant. It is, as I say, more active than the morphine. So uh, heroin is used in hospitals in, in acute cases of deep pain. It's not called heroin in hospitals, I guess that's a, a slang name which has uh, come around. Uh, it's called diamorphine, because it's a diacetate or acetyl uh, morphine. And all of these things work by stopping 
uh, nervous system messages getting to the brain, the pain messages. So, that, so the messages are still being sent from the broken limb or whatever, but it's, it's stopping those messages getting to the brain, which is why they're so effective in really deep pain. Have you ever been unlucky enough to need morphine? Yes, yes I have. Oh, I was playing basketball and I landed very badly. Uh, also, once when I had an a, a abscess in my teeth, uh, under my tooth, I had to have a tooth removed, and my God, that was the worst pain I've had in many, many years.